South Africa is a country that understands the historic pain of an apartheid regime and system. As such, we are among the few countries in the world who can appreciate the plight of the Palestinians as is not real continues to commit atrocities in the name of their apartheid state since they've been there for the past 75 years as an occupying state. Now, with is not real being declared an illegal occupier force by the International Criminal Court as of late, this means there is nowhere Israel and those who support Israel and its crimes can hide. They can run as fast as they can, but they won't be able to hide. Because they were loud and proud, weren't they? Supporting Israel and its crimes. Declaring that Israel is not guilty of genocide, even though everybody could see with their own eyes. That's exactly what Israel is committing. Ethnic cleansing, deleting people in the left, right and center. All in the name of creating a Jewish state under some false religion and a false god. Because what god would permit the commission of atrocities in the name of a promised land? And so, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, whereby Israel's settlement policy, ACJ finds Israel in breach of international law. The very existence of Israel is illegal. It is a made-up state by the West to serve their interest in the Middle East. And they're in Palestine causing headache all the indigenous peoples and as South Africans we appreciate that because we know the way of the Europeans since 1652. They invaded, they made up false claims and stories under the name of their God and Bible and they committed atrocities. Land theft, mass murking of people, handing out chicken pox lace blankets. So while in some instances, absolutely, the methodology might be different, but apartheid is apartheid regardless. And the intentions of it is to create a white supremacist state at the expense and detriment of the indigenous folk. Let us check out a couple of clips to see common reaction to this current ruling. The South African government has released a statement welcoming the advisor opinion of the International Court of Justice issued in The Hague. South Africa was amongst 49 United Nations member states who delivered a statement to the International Court of Justice in February this year on the matter. The advisory opinion also concluded that the State of Israel is obligated to bring an end to its illegal occupation of the occupied Palestinian territories and to immediately seize all new settlement activities. This is uh, groundbreaking. There is nowhere to hide for the state of um, Israel because um, they have always been arguing that um, they are acting on self-defense. This ruling clearly shows that an occupier can't um, act uh, on self-defense and can't um, enter and occupy another person's state uh, mm -hmm. in violation of international law. So this ruling is very decisive, it's instructive, it is not only ending on the a state of Israel in terms of its occupation, which is unlawful, but it also calls for member states of the UN to also act to end this uh, occupation, but also to act in line with the um, uh, declaration against uh, racism and all forms of related intolerance and xenophobia to state that they, it must also be uh, condemned. It might, they must isolate the state of Israel for continuing to perform uh, or practice apartheid um, in Palestine. So this mm -hmm. ruling is the most um, uh, 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 instructive uh, with regards to occupation. You will remember that we made a submission in the court and we characterized the situation almost the same as our situation in South Africa, uh, apartheid, uh, segregation mm -hmm. and uh, related intolerance. And the court has agreed with our submission that indeed what is happening in, the, in, in Gaza and in the West Bank is apartheid. Uh, this confirmation is a, is, a, is a vindication of South Africa's stance. And it is against this background that people of the world must now understand why South Africa stood up because we are expert, we are moral authority when it comes to apartheid. And um, the people of the world helped us to fight against apartheid. 
this ruling also call for the people of the world to help the people of um, of Palestine, Gaza, West Bank um, uh, uh, to, to to fight this enduring uh, apartheid by the state of Israel. And it makes perfect sense when you consider the historical connection between South Africa and Israel, because the apartheid regime in those days had relations with Israel, selling um, weapons and so on and so forth. So simultaneously, while Israel as a project was oppressing the Palestinians over the past 75 years, the apartheid government was itself also oppressing black South Africans. And so the common unity that emerged from those who were against colonialism in those days, the struggle for independence across the continent and other formerly colonized countries, whether it's in the Caribbean islands or South America or even in Palestine, for example. But of course, they've never really had independence considering the situation that we're in right now. And to those who support Israel, the U.S. who kept vetoing calls for ceasefire at the U.N. We remember countries around the world took notes. It's been said that the U.S. passport has been weakening ever since. And now everybody knows, of course, what's going on in America with the political climate, right? Biden himself, who's on a decline, may very well face war crime charges, just like Benjamin. And UK politicians themselves will find it that they too are criminally liable for supporting Israel over the past few months. 30k plus souls. Women, children, mothers and fathers having to watch their babies starve in hospitals. It was rough. But alas, by declaring it an illegal occupying state, it now sets the groundwork for everyone who supports Israel to make a choice. And it's been said that the U It's been said that the European Union backs ICC ruling on Israel occupation of Palestine. Because when the case is so solid that even the colonial masters have no choice but to agree that Israel is going too far, is doing too much. In fact, you being so loud, you may very well ruin their white supremacist plans. Right? Brooks, appreciate your time this afternoon. What is the significance of the European Union back in the ICJ's ruling on Israel's occupation of Palestinian territories? Well, good afternoon. Good to be with you. I mean, in a real sense, the, uh, the, the effect of the ruling is symbolic. Uh, the International Court of Justice has no, uh, has no police force or... Uh, uh, arresting arm that it can it can do anything with, and so it it, it is effectively saying to the court of, of public opinion uh, that individual nations uh, must begin to do something one way or the other, but it can't enforce or order anyone to do anything, and it uh, effectively it can't order the Israelis to do anything either. Uh, but what it has had is is a ripple effect. Um, with some countries like the uh, or associations like the European Union saying that they take cognizance of this and whether mm -hmm. they will move from that symbolic statement to specific acts is, is a matter obviously of conjecture down the road. Uh, it, it might be useful to point out that this particular ruling had its roots in hearings uh, or uh, in, in a case which was uh, filed over two years ago. So it, it isn't, in a sense, directly connected to the recent one the South African government pursued uh, at the International Court of Justice or the International Criminal Court, for that matter. Um, what it has done is it probably has gotten the backs up of the more right-wing uh, members of Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet even further than they already are. Uh, although, having said that, it may encourage other elements in the Israeli political universe to say, uh, we need to begin more actively to reach a solution to our occupation. Hmm. But the, there's a tangle in all this, of course, because it isn't strictly speaking a military occupation solely and, and, and totally, but 
Uh, there are, what, 700,000 or so settlers who have moved to uh, settlements in the West Bank territories over the years. Some mm. of them are, are recognized by the Israeli government and some of them aren't. They're carried out by even more right-wing individuals. Uh, and People coming all the way from America, all the way from London, full-blown white peoples, just taking land and settling wherever they want because the apartheid regime of Israel said so, all in the name of the creation of a Jewish state. There's no country called Jew. But they're trying to create a state for themselves in a made-up state. It was a recipe for disaster because look how far they have gone. And Biden himself has been caught on tape saying were they not in Israel, they would have to create one. All of this for what? And so the, the, the one thing I would add to all of that, though, is that uh, back in 2005 or six, I'm trying to remember which year it was, when the Israeli government decided to leave Gaza, uh, literally every settler every settlement uh, was removed. And the difference, of course, is it was a much smaller number of people who were there. Um, this, is, when you're talking hundreds of thousands of people, you're, getting, you're into a very different set of circumstances. But yeah, modern day neocolonization, kinfolk. It's messed up. Occupied territory Israel settlement illegal as the ICJ rules. ICJ ruling Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu has lost his marbles. Meanwhile, the South African government has released a statement welcoming the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice issued today in The Hague in respect of the legal consequences arising from the policies and practices of Israel in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. South Africa was among 49 United Nations member states who delivered a statement to the ICJ in February on the matter. The advisory opinion also concluded that the state of Israel is obligated to bring an end to its unlawful presence in the occupied Palestinian territory and to seize immediately all new settlement activities hmm. for more on this are they going to do it though you've seen how far they have come the amount of atrocities committed they are committed and uh, for the latest reaction, we are now joined in studio by Ali Gomape. He is from the Africa for Palestine group. And he my joins brother, us my now. brother. Ali, thank you so much uh, for your time this evening here in SABC News. First, I mean, let's uh, get uh, your reaction as uh, Africa for Palestine uh, when it comes uh, to that ruling from the ICJ. Um, thank you for having us and uh, good, good evening to your viewers. Um, Africa for Palestine. Uh, the human rights NGO advocating for Palestinian human rights um, joins millions, uh, if not billions, of uh, uh, justice and peace-loving people of the world in welcoming um, this judgment from the ICJ. This is a watershed, watershed moment in our international system. This is the historic moment in international law. Um, this uh, ruling echoes uh, uh, lived experiences of Palestinians who have been saying for years, 70 plus years, we are living under an apartheid system. Mm -hmm. We are living under a settler colonial system. Uh, this echoes uh, uh, several reports from uh, human rights organizations, including Israeli human rights organization, Bethlehem, including uh, uh, the Human Rights Watch, including Amnesty International, uh, reputable international uh, human rights organization that said um, Israel practices apartheid. Uh, Israel is a, it's a colonial settler state. Mm. And when it comes to this... Uh... Israel practices apartheid. Israel is a settler colonial state. And when it comes to this uh, ruling, what would you say it immediately means for the people of Palestine? With, with, any, with any ruling of the ICJ, outside of implementation of the United Nations means little or nothing. Mm. But in this particular case, what's important to us is that Palestinians are vindicated. So this is no longer an opinion of Ali or Bali that... Uh, 
Israel is an apartheid state. Mm -hmm. This is an opinion of the brightest minds we have in the world. The International Court of Justice cons 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 uh, is constituted by uh, the, some of the brilliant minds in our legal system across the globe of different opinions, of different religious, <coughs> ethnic, uh, uh, racial backgrounds, and so on. And, and they've made um, uh, an informed uh, opinion that Israel is an apartheid state. So what this does is it vindicates Palestinians, but also um, it, it puts a thorn in the eye of those who, ref who refuse the evidence that were presented in, That's right. in front of them, uh, the legs of the United Nations, the United, uh, the, the legs of the United Kingdom, sorry, uh, the United States, mm -hmm. and other uh, powers in the world that support Israel. It vindicates them. So now, so what happens next? Because if Israel is an illegal state. That means everything they claim under self-defense is an illegal act. They don't have the right to commit mass atrocities in the name of self-defense if the very nature of their existence in their place is illegal. It's an, uh, it's an affront to international law. So how can they continue to justify their actions and those who support them continue to support their right to do whatever? When the very nature of their existence is unlawful. When Palestinians call, for instance, the uh, sanctions against Israel for practicing apartheid, the United States can't say, but no, they are not practicing apartheid. They can't say, but that's, a, that's, a, that's an argument, that's something that can be, can be argued. It cannot be argued anymore. It mm. cannot be argued that uh, the presence of Israel on Palestinian territories is illegal, uh, constitutes apartheid, unlawful. And I think what's important from this ruling is not only do they know that, they say it must end. Mm. Uh, there must be concerted efforts from Israel, its partners, and those that support it to end it. Mm, coming to Israel, I mean, I'm sure you saw uh, the comments uh, from the Israeli uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu basically calling the ruling as absurd and also hmm. going as far as saying that Jewish people can't be occupiers of their own land. But it's not your land, Benji. You are an invader. You showed up 75 years ago. Your promised land was promised to you by the West, by the US and by Britain and various European countries that didn't know what to do with y'all post-Holocaust. They didn't want you in Europe. It's not your land, Benji. Go home to Poland, wherever your family truly is from. What do you make of uh, his uh, comments? I mean, it's crazy. It's madness. <laughs> uh, I think Netanyahu has lost his marbles. Uh, him and his, what you call a genocide war cabinet. So Netanyahu has been saying for a number of years that in his government that the lands that have been taken over by Israel, the settlements that have been built on Palestinian territories by Israel are under a disputed territory. Disputed by who? <laughs> Our international system says, for example, for argument's sake, our international system says we love our neighbors, so I'm just making an example. Our international system that there is a borderline of territory of Lesotho and South Africa in the free state, let's say. We can't, South Africans can't say no, we are taking two thirds of Lesotho because we think it's disputed. Disputed by who? By us. So Palestinians in this case are not, uh, are not people, they don't have an opinion, uh, they don't have a right to self determination they don't have a right to land, it is disputed by them. That is pure madness. You simply can't go and steal other people's land and say it is disputed. Um, and of course... You can't just go around stealing people's land and then claiming it's disputed. And the most interesting thing about all of this is that, of course, it's not just about Israel. It's about how the logic of the colonial masters is global and how their reasoning for not wanting to pay reparations and not wanting to give up the land that their ancestors stole is that it's unfair or that it violates land rights or blah, blah, blah. South Africa's land rights were created to benefit them, to make sure that in the new South Africa they will keep that which they stole. The constitution as we know it in this country serves them. They've been saying it for, for, for some time. Mm. But when we look in history, and I think history is the best teacher, when Israel was established in 1945, 
1948, sorry, um, uh, a fact that is not uh, common. Israel is not, there's nothing historical about, uh, historic about Israel. It's a very new state. It's like mm. South Sudan that was now established. It's a very new state. There's nothing historic about it. When it was established in 1948, those who were at the, the forefathers of Israel at the time, Ben, -Gur ben, uh, ben Gurun and others, said, we want all of the land. We want all of Palestinian land. In fact, in 1967, when the United Nations at the time, the League of Nations, partitioned Palestine to give Israel a p uh, particular yeah. piece of land. The Palestinians said, we do not accept this. You are taking our land. But for peace sake, we'll take it. The Israelis said, no, we don't want this partition. We want all of the land. So <coughs> Benjamin Netanyahu and his uh, uh, backers in Israel want all of the land. the land. They don't want half of it. They don't want 70% of it. They don't want 80%. They want all, all, all of it. Evidence of this is what's going on in Gaza today. So the continued killing of Palestinians in Gaza is an extermination program by Netanyahu and his uh, lakis. That was started way before even he was, uh, he was uh, <coughs> Prime Minister of Israel. It's a historic mission by the Zionist and right-wing Jewish uh, supremacist in the land of, historic land of Palestine to take all of the land. Mm. And let's bring it in for a close with that for now, family. So we pay attention to all of this in order to recognize how they move on international scale, in order to understand their global language. Because white supremacy, aka white delusion, is a global system. And it will do what it can in order to stay on top. Using ancient states like Is Not Real to destabilize the Middle East as well as African countries. Because these terror organizations are not funding themselves. The diamonds from Africa, the gold. With Dan Gatler, we've covered him. So yeah, kinfolk, we keep an eye on all of these things. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. Stay royal. Peace.